Hi, welcome to Tutorials Point. In this tutorial, we will talk about the cultivation process of maize crop. Maize has different names in different languages. In Hindi, it is called Makka and in English, it is called Corn. The botanical or scientific name of maize is Gia maize and it belongs to the family grasses. Maize typically grows from 1.2 meter to 3 meters tall. Maize has a single stem and forms 16 to 22 leaves per plant. The fruit of the corn plant is the corn kernel. The ear is a collection of kernels on the cob. The ear is covered by tightly wrapped leaves called husk. Let us now see the required climatic conditions for the cultivation process of maize crop. Maize is a rain-fed kharif crop which is sown at the onset of monsoon and is harvested after the retreat of monsoon. Maize crop is grown both in the tropical and the temperate regions. The optimum temperature for the growth and development of maize crop ranges from 30 degree centigrade to 34 degree centigrade. However, temperatures below 5 degree centigrade and above 45 degree centigrade may spoil the production and yield of maize crop. Maize crop is susceptible to frost at all stages of its growth. Let us now see the stages involved in the cultivation process of maize crop. The stages are land preparation, drip irrigation arrangement, seed sowing, weeding, flowering and pollination, pest and disease management and harvesting. Let us now see how the land is prepared for the cultivation of maize crop. Maize can be grown on a variety of soils ranging from sandy to clayey but it thrives best on well-drained aerated deep loams and silt loams containing organic matter and nutrients. Being a sensitive crop to moisture stress, particularly excess soil moisture and salinity stresses, it is always recommended to avoid low-lying fields having poor drainage and also the field having higher salinity. Therefore, the fields having provision of proper drainage should be selected for the cultivation of maize crop. Maize may be raised on moderately acidic soils but the optimum pH range is from 6.5 to 7.5. Highly saline, acidic, alkaline and waterlogged soils should be avoided. Deep ploughing twice followed by leveling and making of ridges and furrows is required before sowing. Apply and spread farmyard manure or compost at 25 tons per hectare on unploughed field along with 10 packets of azospirillum around 2000 grams and 10 packets of phosphobacteria inoculum around 2000 grams or 20 packets of azophos around 4000 grams. Incorporate the manure into the soil during ploughing. Let us now see how to arrange drip irrigation system for the land that we prepared. Drip irrigation helps save water and fertilizer by allowing water to drip slowly to the roots of plants either onto the soil surface or directly into the root zone through a network of walls, pipes, tubing and emitters. Overhead irrigation wets the plants but produces runoff. In contrast, drip irrigation is a controlled irrigation method. It works by exposing the roots to a direct supply of water. Drip irrigation system releases water in a slow and steady fashion.
and controlled amount of water is supplied to the plants at regular intervals. Let us now see how the seeds are sowed in the prepared field. Before the seed sowing stage commences, treat the seeds with azospirillum inoculin and also with phosphobacteria or azophos. Maintenance of optimum plant population is essential for higher yields. Sixty-six thousand plants per hectare is the optimum plant population to obtain very good yield. The optimum seed spacing is twenty into sixty centimeters. During the Kharif season, it is desirable to complete the sowing operation. 12 to 15 days before the onset of monsoon however in rain fed areas the sowing time should coincide with the onset of monsoon in the absence of any irrigation facilities sowing with the onset of monsoon will be ideal thus in kharif season the crop may be sown from the middle of june to the middle of july for the rabi maize The most suitable time of sowing is between October 15 and November 15. Let us now see the steps involved in the weeding and intercultivation stage. Pre-emergence spray of atrazine at 1.5 kg per hectare in case of light soils and 2 kg per hectare in case of heavy soils. mixed in 500 to 600 liters of water will control most of the broad leaf weeds effectively when the crop is 30 to 35 days old intercultivation is done mainly for checking weed growth and for loosening the soil for proper aeration and to conserve moisture under heavy weed infestation manual weeding is necessary combination of intercultivation and use of weedicide in an integrated manner can be employed beneficially during intercultivation a cultivator may be run followed by the ridger for earthing up hoeing and weeding are done as and when necessary pest and disease management is a crucial factor for the protection of plants The striped borer infests the crop during Kharif and the pink borer during Rabi. These borers cause dead hearts in the early stage of crop. Generally, hybrids are tolerant to these pests. A prophylactic spraying of endosulfan is recommended when the crop is about 10 to 12 days old. If needed this may be followed by an application of carbofuran 3g granules at the rate of 7.5 kg per hectare a fortnight after the first spray diseases also infect the maize crop leaf blight late wilt and charcoal rot are a few diseases that attack the crop spraying mancozet at 8 to 10 days interval will control the leaf blight disease and seed treatment with captan followed by soil drenching with bleaching powder at 45th 55th and 65th days reduces the intensity of two kinds of stalk rots let us now talk about the flowering and pollination stage in the cultivation process of maize crop We will begin by talking about the tassel or the male flower part. Attached to the tassel of the corn plant are several thousand anthers which are responsible for the release of pollen. Pollen transfers the male genetic material needed to fertilize the ovary for one potential kernel. One tassel produces millions of pollen grains. Pollen shed is usually highest mid morning and is influenced by temperature and moisture conditions. 
Due to natural variability of plants within a field, it can take up to two weeks to complete pollen shed for an entire field. We will now see how the ear or the female flower helps in the pollination. The ear of a corn plant is the female flower. Silks that emerge from the ear shoot are the pathways responsible for transporting male genetic material to the ovules or potential kernels of the ear. Silks develop and elongate from the surface of each ovule on the ear. In order for an ovule to fertilize and develop into a kernel, its silk must be pollinated. Silks can remain receptive to pollen up to 10 days after their emergence, but typically successful germination occurs within the first 4-5 to five days. Extremely long green silks is an indication that the ear has not yet been successfully fertilized. Within a few days of successful fertilization, the silks detach from the fertilized ovules. Harvesting is done when grain moisture reaches 20 to 25 percent. This can be noticed when the cobs shed or husk dries up completely. Maize can be harvested either green or dry. Green maize is harvested for roasting or boiling. The leaves and husk start drying out and the part of the kernel where it is attached to the cob starts to turn brownish or blackish in 90% of the kernels of the cob. The yield levels depend upon the variety. An average yield is 5 to 7 tons per hectare. Thank you for watching our tutorial on the cultivation process of maize crop. Stay connected with tutorialspoint.com to watch our next tutorial on the cultivation process of a different crop. Tutorialspoint.com Simply easy learning.